Hello, I'm Bill Winston and welcome to the Believer's Walk of Faith, where we walk by faith and not by sight. Well, let me ask you a question. Is there a mountain in your life? Now, when I say a mountain, I mean something that looks like it's impossible. I mean, could be a money need, could be a healing need, whatever it is. Well, whatever that is, faith is designed to make it happen. I mean, it is designed to move any impossible situation in your life. And that's what you want. Now, that's why it's so important that we develop our faith, not just a little faith, but great faith. See, God wants us to have faith to move every impossible situation. Now, it doesn't make any difference what the doctor said or what the banker said. It's what God said. <laughs> and he said he's given us. And that's why confession and meditation is so important because you can hear your own self. So it goes on down here. He said in verse six, he said, and the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto the sycamine tree, be thou plucked by the root, be thou planted into the sea and it should obey you. Now the Greek said it would obey you. All right, let's straighten out some theology here. <laughs> he is not talking there about how small your faith is. That, that's not the emphasis. You can get some of that out of there, but that, that's not what he's talking about. He's saying, if you just put that scripture up on the board, please. If, if he is saying here that if you had faith as a seed, you'd say. What do you do with a seed? You plant it. That's what you do with it. That's why you call it a seed. Because you plant it. So if you had faith as a seed, you'd plant it. Why? Because when you plant it, you plant it in the soil of your heart. And in the soil of your heart is where it grows. So you can increase your faith by taking the faith that you have and plant it in the soil of your heart. This man said that he, every year, um, he would catch, you know, hay fever. And I know I used to be like that. And then I got the word of God and I found out that, wait a minute, I've been redeemed from hay fever. Lord, increase my faith. Okay, sure, William, if you'd like me to do that, plant what you've got. See, one plants and other waters, but God, what? He gives increase. So I got to plant it. I got to speak what I've been redeemed from, according to the scriptures, into the soil of my heart. So I found the scripture, start speaking it in there. And pretty soon start growing up. And now inside of me begin to change things so that no longer when hay fever season comes, I'm plagued with hay fever. Now just think about that. In here is some seed for all parts of your life. Some of these things that come on us and so forth, and on, we, we have to develop the faith so that we can overcome those things. So when you do speak and decree things or confess things, one of the places that it goes first is into your spirit. We need to um, retrain our spirits. We need to, uh, many times the spirit has gotten infirm. It's gotten sick because of some of the sick stuff we've said. And we need to uh, perform a cleansing for our spirit man. Now, why? Why is that? Because faith works through and from your spirit man. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. See, the, the, the forces of your life 
come out of your spirit. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. The forces of your life come out of your spirit. Keep thy heart, heart, another word for spirit, with all diligence, for out of it are the what? Issues of life. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of your what? Heart, what's going to happen? Your mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure or deposit of the heart brings forth good things. A good man out of the good deposit of the heart brings forth good things. A good man out of the good deposit of the heart brings forth good things. You see what I'm saying? So you sow the seed into your what? Heart. Your heart is the soil. And then in time, it grows up and becometh. An evil man out of the evil uh, tragedy brings forth evil things. But look at Mark now, Mark chapter 4 and verse 26. And he said, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. He should sleep and rise night and day. The seed should spring and grow up. He doesn't know how. The earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. First the blade, then the ear, and after that the full corn in the ear. And, but when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in the sickle because the harvest has come. And he said, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God or to what comparison shall we compare it? Check it out. It is like the grain of a mustard seed, which when it's sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth, glory to God. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all the herbs and shoot it out great, shoot out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. Here's a tree in the way. He said over in Luke 17, call it a sycamine tree. So it's in the way. It's something that is an obstacle. It's something that is a problem in your life. Now the way we're going to move, remove it is by faith. We're going to say something to it. Man, this is good. We can speak to problems. And the thing about when Jesus spoke to it, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. There's a few words. But notice what he spoke. He spoke the results. Amen. Amen. Only the devil is in the detail. But he spoke the results. And you just speak the results and faith takes care of the details. It making sense to you? See, God never intended for you to wrestle with problems down here. You speak to problems. Amen. 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 Yes, By his stripes, I'm healed. Amen. Sickness, leave my body now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Watch this. And if you're developed in faith, sickness will obey you. Yes, Does that make sense? Now this, this, is, this is the f foundation really of this, what I'm trying to teach here today. Now let's talk about foundation for a minute. 
Psalm chapter 11, verse 3, please. Psalm chapter 11, verse 3. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Foundation. It's a platform. The very basis by which something operates. The foundation. Just do a study of that word sometime. It's a powerful word. But when people come in this and get saved in this church, we send them to foundations. Why? They don't have one. Now, what did the enemy try to do? He tried to lay a foundation in them without Christ. And there really is no real foundation without Christ because he is the foundation. So ever since the fall of man, what happened is man's spirit shut down to God. So the enemy took advantage of that. And now he built the whole education system around yes, no God. Yes, yep. So he is going to try to make it so that every man thinks things are right in their own eyes. Yes. Satan has tried to take the book, the Bible. The foundation out of every place in society. Take it out of education, take it out of government, take it out of this, take it out of that. Why? Because the Bible brings the truth back in. Yes. And the truth will make you free. Amen. See, people in the world are in bondage and don't know it. Amen. Amen. I say it's like straightening up chairs on the Titanic. You know, why are you straightening them up? It's going down. So this whole foundation piece is what we're putting back in. We're, you come in here and all of a sudden we start talking things that sound kind of crazy, but they're in the Bible. Right. Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let him just uh, anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick or heal the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if there's been any sins, he'll be forgiven. Wow. You mean I don't have to go over to you mean I could get healed now with some oil? What happened? The enemy talked us out of that. Yes. And told us the only way we're going to get healed is like this. Now people come in here and say, oh, praise God, I'm, I'm just going to believe God for my healing. Now they haven't built up a foundation yet. So they're trying to get something because they saw somebody else get something. And they need to wait till they get themselves built Amen. back up. Yes, then it'll work. Yes, Watch this. And don't feel in any way condemned about taking the medication. That's right. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Now, I admit, some of it has side effects. I'm not talking against it. I'm just saying unbelief became the standard. And now we got to get back to the foundation. How are we going to do it? By faith. Over in Hebrews 11, 3, he says something. He says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God uh, so that the things which are seen are not made by things which do what? Appear. So through faith, we understand. Through faith, we understand. Now, what does that mean? That means that you've got to take what God says at face value. I'm going to put it in those terms. 
2 Kings chapter 7. Then Elijah said, hear ye the word of the Lord. Now understand there's a famine on. Everybody's, I mean, they're eating dog heads and cow's heads, donkey heads and everything else trying to survive because they're out of food, out of everything. And Elijah said, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord tomorrow about this time. Amen. Now I'm, I'm about to put, I'm about to put my own words in there now. It's going to be plenty and it's going to be cheap. Praise God. All right, look at the next person now who comes from a very academic background. Watch this. Verse two. The Lord whose, ha whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, you're going to see it with your eyes, but you're not going to take part of it because it doesn't make sense. It's not designed to make sense. It's designed to make faith. And you will find when you take a plan of God or you take um, a situation and no faith is applied to it. You will find you put it into time. And that's a mistake. Because you just played a game with the devil. Put it in the framework of a fallen man. Yes, sir. The devil is good at delays. Amen. He specializes in them. How long you been waiting on a husband? <laughs> no, let's, let's not use that example. How? how uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you can't. You can't put it in time because time was never meant to be your master. It was meant to be your servant. And you, through faith, tell time what to do. Are you following what I'm saying? Now we're going to get back. The reason why we're talking about this is because I want you to get a picture of the foundation, how far we've fallen how far we've left the foundation of what God has planned in our lives. Look at Jesus healing people. Look at Mark's gospel. Mark says, you know, every time you see a healing straightway or immediately or the man stretched out his arm and right away it got healed. You didn't see no time. No, sir. He cursed the fig tree and came back the next morning. Master, behold. I mean, we were in, in, in uh, Brazil and went to the fig tree restaurant. We were there preaching. Fig tree restaurant. And that fig tree restaurant seated about 150 to 200 people. And in the middle of the fig tree restaurant was a big tree called a fig tree. And the branches went all the way out over the restaurant. That's how big the fig tree was. Amen. Amen. In less than 24 hours. <laughs> yes, sir. Dried up. Yes, sir. Amen. Isn't this good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's how powerful 
faith is. And see, some people say, man, that is Jesus. Well, wait a minute. He wants me to do, he wants me to imitate him. He wants me to do exactly what he did. That's right. So I'm just saying here that this faith that you've got is a higher law than time. Amen. It supersedes time. And it can manipulate time. Faith only deals with the invisible. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. They What you see physically is dependent on something that you can't see for its existence. Amen. Amen. What you see is dependent upon something that you can't see for its existence. For example, I see you physically right here. Am I right? If anyone now, for whatever reason, they're going to live the long life and their spirits, what you can't see, leave that body. What will happen to the body? Fall. If I leave it on the ground, what will happen to it? Why? Because what you couldn't see has left. Now, this is a extremely important point about faith. Yes. Yes, sir. That's why some people don't move. Faith doesn't deal with what you can see. Right. Look what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And I want to try verse 27. Let's go there. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. Put your mighty and base things of the world and things which are, what? Despised, hath God, what? Chosen. Yea, and things which are, what? Not, to what? To bring to naught the things that are. He chooses things that are not, not seen, to bring to naught, zero, the things that are seen. That didn't do it too well. Let's go to Romans chapter 4, verse 17. <laughs> you see what I'm doing here? I'm, 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 I'm knocking at your foundation here. I'm, I'm, I'm showing you where our thinking has even been off. Because we've been trained by a world that was without God. But now you're going to be retrained. Say amen to that. It's called renewing of the mind. As it is written, I made thee a father of many nations before him whom he, him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which what? Be not as though they were. Here's spot. Here's spot. Spot. Here's spot. Why are you doing that? I'm calling my dog. Well, your dog is not here. I know. I want him here. Hallelujah. I'm calling things. Come on. But be not. Come on. Yes, sir. But you do it. It just so happens when we put it in the context of getting healed, yeah. all of a sudden you got a problem. Yeah. That will work for your healing, work for your money. Come on. Work for anything because faith only deals with what's not here. It only deals with the invisible. It only deals with what you cannot see, feel, touch, taste, and smell. Once it's visible, faith disappears. Make sense? So... They saw it was dried up from the what? Roots. Roots. Normally, do you see roots? Underground. 